Hi, this is Jennifer Dick with Next Maps Inside Out 21st Century Networking Program. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to integrate uh, microcontrollers into your circuits and I'm also going to demonstrate a little bit of soldering uh, on the copper tape for a more robust connection. So what I have here is an AT Tiny 85 that I've already programmed with two different functions. So an AT Tiny 85 is a little microcontroller from Amtel and you can see that it's got eight different pins and some of these pins you can program to do different things. So we're going to use two pins. This is pin 0 and pin 1. Uh, they both have different functions that will change how electricity goes through and it's going to give us a little blinking effect with a light. Um, power goes in here and power exits the microcontroller through this pin. And you can look out something called a pinout diagram. You can find them online really easily. That will show you what the different pins can do. So you can see I've already laid down my copper tape, my electrical traces here. And to get them positioned correctly, what I did is, first, after I bent out the legs of the microcontroller so it can lay as flat as possible, I then traced, I just took a pencil and went around the pins that I knew I'd have to connect on the paper. So that way I knew where to put my uh, copper tape. You can see I've also left room for my LEDs because that's this is going to be a lighting circuit. Um, in the other videos I've been using Gchi circuit stickers which are an easy way to incorporate lights into paper circuitry but since those aren't immediately available you can pre-order them right now um, on Crowd Supply. you can still use more traditional surface mount components. So this here is an LED, a surface mount LED. Uh, on our website, if you go to the paper circuitry materials, you can see what kind that we've been using. And it's super flat, and all you need for it to go on your circuit is a piece of tape. So I've cut out a piece of tape, and they are kind of hard to move, so I think it's easier to put the tape down first on top of the LED to pick it up, and then you can reposition it. So I'm going to just tape my LEDs down here the gaps where they go on my circuit. They're all a little different. Uh, this particular company that made them, I don't know if you can see the camera, there's a little green line at one end and that tells us which end is the negative. If it's too hard to tell on the surface mount LEDs that you're using, I think it's really helpful to make a simple test circuit so that you can just flip the LED around um, and figure out what the polarity is based on what lights it up using um, a battery. Okay, so I've got both of these down, and now what I'm going to do is solder the connections. I've just got a basic Weller soldering iron, and the trick I found with soldering on copper tape is if you hold down the heat source too long, the soldering iron, it's going to cause the adhesive on the back of the copper tape to lift up from the paper. So you want to be as quick as possible and so what I found works first is you want to tin your tip so you get some solder on there that's going to help distribute the heat or so my father the ham radio operator tells me and then I make sure my solder is right ready to go and then I just lay it down and then sometimes I'll use the tip to spread it around to make sure that the, the solder is making a good connection between the two pieces of tape. Again, if you're using copper tape with conductive adhesive, which you can buy online, um, Amazon carries it from Lucent Path. You can also get it uh, Adafruit or SparkFun. I still find the safest way if you're going to have a more complicated circuit is to solder the connections between the copper tape. So I'm just laying the solder down. Every time that there is a join between my copper tape, I want to make sure that I've soldered that. And so I take a quick look, it looks like that's good to go. The first thing I want to do is troubleshoot my circuit to make sure it works before I even put the microcontroller in. So the first thing I'm going to do to troubleshoot it is I'm going to connect some power. These clips are connected to a power source. So this is where my electricity is coming in and this is where it goes out. So to test it, I just have a piece of copper tape here, just like what I've used for the rest of the traces, and I'm just going to lay it flat, connecting the power in to where the two LEDs are. 
And so when I press down, that completes the circuit, and it shows me that the connections are good. But I also see as I poke, oh, this one looks like it's it's not seated quite so well. So I'm going to press down more, and then we see, okay, the light's still staying on when I move it around, so that means that's a much better connection. So now that I know that my lights are positioned correctly and that the traces can complete a circuit, I'm going to add my microcontroller. Again, you can tape it down, but I have found that tape in the microcontrollers, it's, it's really hard to get a good connection just using tape. So I'm going to solder this in as well. Before I start soldering though, I just want to take one last check to make sure that all of my pins can comfortably connect to their traces of the copper. Uh, something else to remember when you're putting down your microcontrollers, you need to make sure that it's facing the right way. It's easy to accidentally put it in upside down. So you want to make sure that you locate the little dot in your microcontroller because that will help you orient it correctly. Um, you'll also notice that I've bent some of these pins down and up again to make it easier to position them on the traces without touching because if they touch of course it's gonna it's gonna short. I'm not saying this is necessarily the best way but how I found it easiest to solder the microcontrollers down on paper is first I'm just gonna place solder on the edge here before I put down the microcontroller because I want to make sure there's a little base um, already there for the solder to pick up. So I'm just putting little little tiny pools of solder on the copper tape and it's gonna cool down and harden up really quickly and that's fine because even if it's once it's it's cooled down and it's totally solid which will happen almost instantly it's still gonna it's it's gonna be really easy to heat it up again with the soldering iron the pin is now fully positioned over my little pool of cold solder I'm gonna reheat the solder by pressing my soldering iron down and that'll melt it again and then I just sort of move it over the pin, and I'm going to do that with the rest of these. And of course you want to be really careful because the soldering iron is super hot. So that, that looks like that's a pretty good first, first try. And now the moment of truth. Hook up. Power in. Power out. And cross your fingers. And there we have it. You can see that my circuit is working. These are blinking at different rates. Um, that was something that I programmed in Arduino using SparkFun's uh, tiny programmer. It's a nifty little, little stick that you can use. And we have some tutorials and information online to help you through that process. I'm not a coder and I figured it out in an afternoon with help from our friend Natalie Freed. So if I can do it, you can do it. And you can see now my little picture has glowing flashlights. They're blinking. I think those kids need to change the batteries before they go through the scary door. Thanks so much for joining us and stay tuned for more tutorials and demonstrations from NextMap.